So these earrings are the greatest thing ever and nobody, I mean nobody, can tell me otherwise. Like look, I'm just a jingly jangly ball of light and it's great. These are really heavy. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Rebecca here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, how you doing? Today I'm going to be very distracted by these dangly things in my ears and it's brilliant! Today I'm bringing you a big old book haul because I haven't done one in a while on my channel and the last kind of haul kind of video that I did was actually an unhaul which was part one of three and part two and part three should be coming your way very very shortly. I just haven't edited them yet. So without further ado, we have some books here that I've purchased myself, a couple of gifted ones and a novel menagerie haul as well. So without further ado, let's just go. So the first ones I wanna talk about are ones I found on Facebook groups, which I'm having to hide from now because it's dangerous for my bank balance. But the first one I have is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So this one um, has been doing the rounds on booktube all year. Loads of people have loved it. Not very many people haven't. I believe there's a very few amount of people who have not enjoyed this. The hype around this has been unreal. I really wish that I'd wore my green versions of these to go with the books because the red doesn't really go. But this one follows the storyline of a woman whose sister has been sent away to wed this man and she sends her sister a letter to say that she thinks her husband is trying to poison her. So will she please come and basically rescue her? And that is what she does. She goes to her sister's aid to try and rescue her but not everything is as it seems and I'm really excited to get to it. So next up we have The Foundling by Stacey Halls which is the same author as The Familiars. Stacey Halls writes historical fiction like historical contemporary fiction from what I can tell and this one is no different. This is set in London in 1754 six years after leaving her illegitimate fat I can't get my words out. Six years after leaving her illegitimate daughter Clara at London's Foundling Hospital, Bess Bright returns to reclaim the child she has never known. Dreading the worst that Clara has died in care, Bess is astonished to be told that she has already claimed her. Her life is turned upside down as she tries to find out who has taken her little girl and why. Less than a mile from Bess's lodgings in the city, a rich young widow has not left her house in a decade. When she is asked to hire a nursemaid for her daughter, she is hesitant to welcome someone new into her home and her life. But her past is threatening to catch up with her and tear her care carefully constructed world apart theories. I think that this one will follow Bess taking up the nursemaid position and finding out that her daughter is this person's daughter and she becomes her daughter's maid maybe? I don't know. I feel like this is going to be something that I just have to be really really in the mood for and when I read it I will hopefully find that it hits the spot perfectly but it's very much a mood read for me. Next up I found this one in No Word of a Lie. I picked it up because Vanessa from Wanderness had been um, mentioning it quite a bit and that is Graceling by Kristen Kashua. This is one that Vanessa has mentioned several times as being high on her want to read list like when we've been talking and stuff. So when I seen this second hand, I was like, you're mine. And look, because of the spine being so broken, I can open it flat and nothing happens. It's brilliant. I love it. Like I don't have to worry about breaking the spine or anything. So this follows Katza, who carries the burden of a skill, which is the grace of killing. And everywhere, everyone in the world is born with exceptional skill, known as, a, known as a grace. Hers just happens to be killing. As a graced killer who has been able to kill a man with her bare hands from the age of eight, she's forced to work as the king's thug. Feared by the court and shunned by those her own age, the darkness of her grace casts a heavy shadow over Katza's life. It Katza remains diet, di diet, defiant. And when the king of Leon's father is kidnapped, she investigates and stumbles across a mystery. Who would want to kidnap the old man and why? And who was the extraordinary graced man whose fighting abilities rivaled her own. The only thing Katza is sure of is she is no longer wants to kill. The intrigue surrounding the kidnapping offers her a way out and little does she realise when she takes it that something insidious and dark lurks behind the mystery. Something spreading from the shadowy figure of a one-eyed king. Interesting. So I feel like this is the kind of fan fantasy that I should be getting invested in. I feel like I should have already been getting invested in it. We came out 10 years ago so you know I should, in fact 12 years ago, I still think it's 2018, 12 years ago this came out. So I really should get to it um, because I feel like this is up there with like throne of glass tier kind of uh, fighting and fantasy and I'm hoping that I get invested in this. So the next bunch are also from the same Facebook sale and um, <laughs> I'm just going to show you them all in one go. That's the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. Hello! That is Heartstopper Volume 1, Volume 2 
and volume three. As somebody who doesn't tend to read graphic novels and manga and enjoy them, I don't know why I've done this. The hype train really got to me, so there's that. So I do believe that um, these will be fairly quick reads, they'll be fairly heartbreaking reads, and hopefully I understand the hype train as much as everybody else, because, you know, they're stunning. Okay, so <laughs> these are dangling. These are really heavy. Okay, so we're going to go on to some of the books that I've purchased myself. I will leave a link to, hopefully to all of these down below, um, to my bookshop.org UK uh, one, where if you make a purchase through that website and you're in the UK, money from your purchase will go towards a certain independent bookshop if you would like it to, or it will go into the general pool of uh, donations towards independent bookshops to keep them thriving because we all need independent bookshops. So the first one that I have here is a sequel to the book that I'm currently reading and that is Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend. This is book two in the Trials of like the Morrigan Crow series and I'm currently in the middle of one of Nevermore and absolutely loving it. Nevermore follows Morrigan Crow who is destined to die on her 12th birthday as a cursed child. However that 12th birthday rolls around and the man named Jupiter North whisks her away to the city of Nevermore to claim her as his own kind of like prodigy. She is forced to partake in some tasks to ensure that she can stay in Nevermore and become part of the wondrous society as she so fully deserves in Jupiter's eyes. I absolutely love it. The characters I've met so far have been phenomenal, although I have hated uh, her dad and her stepmom because her stepmom was clearly with his dad for the title that he has, which if you've read Nevermore you will understand what I mean. But really, really, really enjoying it. I keep thinking I can say spider but it's not. It's just the embellishment of the wood on my desk. But anyway, uh, really, really enjoying Nevermore so I knew that I had to pick up Wondersmith um, while I could. So I got this one and the next one on the same day deal um, and I'm really, really pleased I did and I'm so excited to get to this one. That second one is in the middle grade and it's Tinsel by Sabelle Pounder. This is the story of the girls who invented Christmas. What if it isn't Santa Claus, as in Mr. Santa Claus, Father Christmas? What if it's Blanche Claus? I did have to check the back for her name. What if it's Blanche Claus and her best friend Rinky and, you know, what if they are the ones who created Christmas? I am just really, really excited to get to this one. I like the idea that uh, women are working their backsides off to get the credit they deserve in this book, hopefully. Uh, and it's a middle grade, so hopefully it's going to be some festive fun. Ooh, I have not opened it before, but that is stunning. I like that a lot. I'm really excited to get to this one. Also, that horse has a hairband with antlers on it to make it a reindeer. I like that a lot. Moving on is a charity shop pick that I was so excited to find and that is Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. So this past week I've been off a few days from work and the shops reopened in England so lockdown was lifted. Although technically I'm in tier three so lockdown is still a thing which is really, really, really upsetting considering how busy the shopping centres have been lately. So anyway, <laughs> that's by the by. We went out to like a clearance bargains place. This is all in my reading vlog as well. I have explained this fully and basically found a charity shop and found this in the charity shop for a pound. I was like I can't leave this here. I was in two minds about it. I knew I shouldn't leave it there but I was like do I really need a book? Yes obviously I need a book. So Dan was like just do it just buy it. So I did obviously hello it's here in my possession. This is the first book in the Great Court series. I've picked this up purely on Jade from JD Ray Reads' word as well as I think it was Steph from Steph Loves. I think she's read this too. I may be wrong about that. I'm sure she has but I know it's definitely on Jade's recommendation too. And this follows Felicio Falcio Valmont and fellow magistrates Kest and Brasty who've been reduced to working as bodyguards for a nobleman who refuses to pay them because the king is dead and the great courts have been disbanded and they were part of the great courts. Things could be worse, their employer could be lying dead on the floor while the three of them are forced to watch as the killer plants evidence framing them for the murder. Oh wait, that's exactly what's happening. I mean they already have motive, they're not being paid for their work so that's interesting. A royal conspiracy is about to unfold in the most corrupt city in the world and it could mean the ruin of everything Falcio, Kest and Brasty have bought it for. If the trio went to unwind the conspiracy, save the innocents and reunite the great courts, they'll have to do it with nothing but the tattered courts on their backs and the swords in their hands. Because these days every noble is a tyrant, every knight is the thug, and the only thing you can really trust is a traitor's blade. Okay, that sounds really, 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 really good. Why haven't I picked this up before? Oh, I'm so excited. Next up we have another fan- I want to say it's a fantasy, um, and it's by an author who's had a lot of buzz from what I've seen, and that is Octavia E. Butler's Kindred. This one is a very short one. 
pick this one up on bookshop.org uk so if you go to my link down below um any of the links will take you to my bookshop.org page i did purchase that on on there there is a link to the there is this linked in one of my playlists for it playlists watch lists book lists whatever they're called on my page the list on bookshop.org uk that is where you'll find this i picked this one up because i was buying another book which i'll mention in a minute it has nothing to do with this at all and i was like you know what i've been fancying it let's do it this one is set in uh 1976 dana dreams of being a writer in 1815 she is assumed a slave when dana first meets rufus on a maryland plantation he's drowning she saves his life and it will happen again and again neither of them understands his power to summon her whenever his life is threatened nor the significance of the ties that bind them and each time Dana saves him the more aware that she is her her own life might just be over before it's even begun this sounds really really good like I don't understand how the different like time periods will be linked um so I'm quite intrigued to find out about that and it's really short so goodness knows how it's all gonna fit in but I'm very very excited and then back on the Christmassy theme I picked up The Christmas Aurus by Tom Fletcher also on the bookshop org UK website. The reason I picked this up is because I went to Tesco, I don't have the book here but imagine it's here, I picked up The Christmasaurus and The Winter Witch which is the sequel and when I got home I realised that I picked that up but I don't actually have The Christmasaurus because I was thinking of The Creakers and I wanted The Red Spread Edges which you can get on Bookshop so I will leave that down below where you can go buy The Red Spread Edge book. This follows, I believe it's a young boy named William Trundle who basically all he wants for Christmas is a dinosaur and Santa leaves him Christmasaurus the only one of its kind, biggest of its kind, and obviously William is in a whole heap of adventurous trouble, I'm assuming. So I'm very, very, very excited for this. I've heard amazing things about Tom Fletcher's writing, I've heard the way that he weaves the words on the page, even for younger readers, is just phenomenal. So I'm very, very excited to get to this, and this is actually on my December TBR, not that I've picked it up yet, because I'm still in the middle of Nevermore. Next up, we have a competition one of mine. I won this on Twitter, and that is Grave Secrets by Alice James. The author herself was doing a signed personalised giveaway. And no words of a lie, right? I picked this one up because it had the tagline, dead funny, it's set in Staffordshire, the woman gets to deal with zombies arriving, rising from their graves, vampires sneaking out of their coffins and a murder to solve. And she's the one raising the zombies and she's dating one of the vampires, so what more can go wrong? But Grave Secrets, it has on the tagline with zombies and romance and vampires and croquet. Everything you need in a murder mystery, clearly. I love me a good cosy murder mystery. It came with pink sequins that I just keep finding everywhere. This is also signed by the author. I love it. I think it's a brilliant uh, signature and little doodle. So thank you very much, Alice James, for posting this giveaway and let me win it thank you very very much for choosing me to be the winner i can't wait to get to it lastly from the books i bought myself is the never tilting world by rin chapeco this one again was another bookshop purchase i purchased this when it came out in paperback pre-ordered it for the release very very excited to have it in my possession it's also very stunning and having read The Bone Witch, I really liked Rinch Peckle's writing. I just felt it could have went a little bit further in The Bone Witch. And hopefully this will deliver because this is one of her most recent releases. This is a world split between day and night. Generations of twin goddesses have long ruled Aeon until one sister's betrayal split their world in two. The Great Abyss now divides the two realms, one cloaked in eternal night, the other scorched beneath an ever-burning sun. Two goddesses' daughters must set out on a separate, equally dangerous journey in hope of healing their broken world, no matter what the sacrifice it demands. I think it's a duology. The Ever Cruel Kingdom is the sequel, I believe. This came out in 2019, so I think it is the sequel. Yeah, so the sequel is The Ever Cruel Kingdom, so I'm very excited to get to this one because sisters warring and the world's Splitting sounds like a heap of fun. So next up we have two gifts. Now I've been part of bookish secret Santa groups uh, so I'm part of a book club once upon a bookish is it the ones yeah once upon a bookish book club. Chloe if you're watching this you know it's your group I think I got it right remind me if I haven't um, but we basically did a wish list swap on there and I was paired with the lovely Laura who gifted me some uh, Maltesers that I've ate so I can't show you them but she also gifted me the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman off my wish list and I'm really 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 excited. This follows a set of old people, old people, <laughs> OAPs who solve a murder like as in they bring up cold cases to solve. Think of, if you've watched New Tricks in the UK, think of New Tricks, okay? The one with um, Amanda Redman, James Bolam, and Dennis, 
Waterm Dennis Waterman, is that right? That is basically what it reminds me of. It reminds me of New Tricks. If I remember, I'll put a picture here. It reminds me of New Tricks. Um, <laughs> and I'm really, really excited. So this, uh, I've got the little note here. Uh, enjoy your gift, books and chocolates, the perfect combination from Laura. If I put the, I always put the note back in here. Um, but this is an, set in a retirement village. Four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders. And they just happened to find a live case uh, that they can solve. But that is the fun cover. Look at it. It's so pretty. So I'm very, very excited to get to this one. Richard Osman is the uh, co-presenter of Pointless. And he has his own game show called The House of Games. And he's just a general funny guy. So I'm really, really excited to get to this. It has a very high very 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 high review so far and then the last book uh kind of couples with an unboxing that i have uh, which i'll show you in a second but this last one um is also a wish list uh swap book and you don't actually know who you get paired with like as in your name gets put to somebody else but you don't get that person in return but my person oh my god i almost cried when my book came with my sweets my sweets were the malteser share bag the reindeer is in so i've put them away for Christmas. How I have not ate any of them yet, I do not know. But my person was Leanne from the novel Menagerie slash Literary Diversion. Oh my God, I was so, so excited to have her. When I opened the book and opened the note, honestly, I started filling up. I just love Leanne so much. She's such a little darling. And she got me Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and Maguire, which is the first in the Weird with Children series. And to be honest, very short. <laughs> I'm very shocked at how short it is considering the price of it. So thank you very, very much, Leanne. I know that I've messaged you and thanked you and just been so so grateful but honestly you're amazing the note inside reads this is how i nearly teared up the note inside reads merry christmas from your not so secret santa i was so delighted when i got you it was so special knowing it was someone i liked this book is like a hug in fantasy and i love it merry early christmas from leanne i was just oh my god somebody likes me i felt like a teenager at school all over again <laughs> yeah i'm very very excited to get to this one this i believe these are portal doors where kids kind of end up in fairy tales like fairy tale fantasy lands and when they come back they're known as wayward children they're not ever quite the same as they were when they went in so they end up living together or staying in contact with like this social worker of sorts to oversee their mental well-being obviously their transition back into real life it kind of reminds me a little bit of miss peregrine's which i didn't like but i've heard amazing things about shauna mcguire as an author under her various pseudonyms too and the series in general so i'm very very excited to get to this one leanne honestly thank you so so much your as i said your note made me tear up and have you seen this by the way it's got a freaking spaceship on the front i think it's a spaceship but anyway <laughs> unbelievable Honestly, I feel so blessed with some of the books I've got this month. I'm so grateful to my bookish secret Santas. And I'm also part of another wishlist group uh, event from the bookish, um, Once Upon a Bookish book group, which is where I got this one from. So there'll be another one coming in January. So, you know, can't help myself. Thank you so, so much to Laura for the Thursday Murder Club and uh, Leanne for Every Heart of Doorway. I'm so, so pleased. So if you can't tell from that last book what that means, that means that we have a novel menagerie unboxing. I'm trying not to show my address, it's really difficult. Uh, Leanne from Literary Diversions owns the novel menagerie and she does the best bookmarks honestly they are stunning i have a post up on facebook all about on facebook on instagram all about these um but i'm just going to show you them all now because i love them so <laughs> these are from her christmas launch and we have i haven't taken them out of the plastic yet because i'm scared to use them even though it's december and i could use these in so many of my books because they would go uh but first off we have this one which is like a red with a uh, little snowflakes on and i love it I love it because it's red and white in football. Uh, next up we have blue snowflakes with the uh, grey ribbon. Ribbon? Would you call that ribbon? Tassel. That's the word I'm looking for. And I love this one too. It's very, very pretty. There's a theme. Can you tell? Next up we have the Matilda. I love this. This is the Matilda bookmark. Um, it's got little pictures of Matilda with her book and the word Matilda with her letters all around it too. Um, and her standing on books and sitting with them and it's just very bookish and beautiful and I love it. We then have this one which I can't see underneath but I've seen that this had stags on it on some of the prints so I took my chances and hoped there was a stag. Uh, but this is like an animal bookish one so it's like a foxy one 
um, which I'm very, very excited about too. We then have Christmas trees, Christmas trees in like a really cute pattern with a pink tassel on it. I can't really see colours properly, can you tell? And then we have this really cute Christmas house family scene. Look at it, it's so pretty. All the lines of Christmas houses with a like, silver tassel. No, it's a white tassel, Rebecca, it's the lights. But these are snow topped blocks of flats and houses and they're the cutest little thing ever. And then we have the stag. I love this. This is blue with baubles, snowflakes, a stag, just some Christmassy feels to it with white uh, tassels as well. And then the last one, I was also really excited for. I bought all the other ones and then realised that this was also supposed to be being released, so I had to go back and order it separately. But that is the Christmas lights with the red tassel. I just think these are stunning. Leanne owns the shop The Novel Menagerie. By the time this video goes out, however, she will have closed her shop for Christmas because she has worked her little booty off this year. Considering everything that she's shared on Instagram, I honestly think she's done phenomenally. Phenomenally. That is a big word. So I'm very, very uh, excited to share her shop with you because come January, she is bringing new items. She shared them all on the Patreon Live that she did a couple of weeks ago. She shared a couple of them and I'm so excited. I can't wait for one of them. And oh my God, I'm so excited. But I also got something in the post today from Leanne and I haven't owned it yet. So as I said, I am part of her Patreon group and I've selected uh, the bookish buddy tier, I think it is, the one that comes with the monthly bookmark. So, so this came today and I'm very excited to open it. I'm, please do not bend. That's a very good sticker to have, please do not bend. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna open it because I think this is the monthly bookmark, I believe. Um, because each month if you're part of that tier you get the monthly bookmarks. This will be my first one, I think. I think. I'm sure it is. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, it's in... Leanne, you spoil. You spoil everybody. So, comes in the cutest little paper. I love Leanne so much. Oh, oh, oh. And it's a bookmark that I did not order. So, the, the worry was... It's not really a worry for me because your girl loves the bookmarks from her shop. But the worry was that Leanne was concerned that some people may get duplicates. She did actually put a disclaimer out when she did her Christmas launch saying that if you are part of her Patreon, uh, you may end up with a duplicate. That is not the case for me because the bookmark is the one that I did have in my basket and I had to put away because as you saw, I already had a lot. But this is a book. So I will leave a link to Leanne's channel and her uh, bookshop, her bookshop, her bookmark shop down below. And I am so pleased that this year I managed to connect with Leanne a little bit more on a personal level uh, through Instagram and through her shop and through Patreon. Leanne and lovely wife Helen, which is Leanne's lovely wife, obviously. <laughs> Duh. Uh, they're both lovely, lovely people. When I watched the live show on Patreon last week, I just got such a nice vibe from them too. It was like, it was like they were old friends and we were on a video call. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels like that. Leanne is so underrated and deserves so many more subscribers than what she currently has on YouTube. Please go follow her for all kinds of bookish fun and cats. If you like cats, you need to go follow Leanne because she has the cutest little kittens and they're just adorable. So yeah, please go follow her. There we have it. That's the end of this video. The book haul, the bookmarks haul, my hair being a mess. We reach the end. If you've seen any videos in this, if you've seen any videos in this books, if you've seen any books in this video that you would like me to read before others, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you've read any of these, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of them. No spoilers, please, because that would be trash. If you want that description box, you find a link to all of the books. There's a lot here, so hopefully all of the books. Uh, and where you can purchase them through bookshop.org.uk and support independent bookstores. There'll also be a link to my social medias down below. So go say hi on other platforms like Instagram and Twitter because hi yeah. It's like nine o'clock on Saturday night, I need to stop. But yes, thank you all so, so much for watching. As I said, those links will be down below right next to the like and subscribe. Go do that, it would really help out my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Click the little bell icon too. And if you've made it this far and would like to leave an emoji in the comments, leave me a stack of books and I shall see you all soon with another video. Bye.